Anna had been feeling slightly unwell, stomach pain. She'd had them a couple of days. My mum actually took her up to Wigan Infirmary, just to the A&E. The day after, they do a couple of scans and then they, they say it's her appendicectomy. So off she goes to theatre, back on the ward. Anna was all twitchy and I was asking people what was wrong. And they sent me away for like, meant to get a cup of tea. And when I was coming back, the anaesthetist run past me. So I just chased him. I don't know why I chased him. I haven't got a clue. But I chased him right up to Rainbow Ward. And I asked him then, was it anything, was it about my Anna? And he told me it was nothing to do with that. I, so I find out and about a good half an hour later, she'd suffered a cardiac arrest. She'd been 15 three days. She was doing amazing at school. Very, very high estimated grades for GCSEs. Fully talking, more than competent teenager. Don't get me wrong, she was cheeky and give me a bit of grief. But no, she was, she was well above average. Brown belt at karate. There was nothing she couldn't do. Nothing at all. She was just one of them gifted children. But oh no, she come home, she couldn't talk. She, she couldn't do anything, anything at all. And I, I, had, I compared her to a newborn baby, as in the newborn baby can't do anything for themselves and neither could Anna. I'd spent, oh, six months, easy six months, just researching different words in Google. Medical injuries, children, paediatrics, brain injury. And there was only one name that kept coming back. So yeah, I sent them an email. That's how we started with Slater and Gordon. Yeah, Anna's had the best of everything, and that is including her legal side of it, as I did research and research and research. And every person I've met from that, from the legal team have always had Anna's best interest at heart, definitely. She's, she's our Anna, the, my Anna, and that's what they call her. So that that is the personal side of it. She's not AW, or she's not client X, she, she's Anna, and they've always maintained that. They've treated her as an individual, and that's what Anna is. Everything that Anna needs, Slate and Gordon have helped us guarantee that we will get that. That is there now. The interim payments have been important. Making sure Anna's got the best therapists, the best equipment, the right wheelchair, the parallel bars, the plinth. There's a vehicle on the front. We don't have to rely on public transport. Anna's bought her own house. Slater and Garden have, oh, they've been great on, on every aspect of it though and it's sorted and Anna's financially sorted for life and I, I, I thank Slater and Garden for that because I wouldn't have been able to do it without them, <laughs> that's a definite. never says why me, doesn't live in self-pity. For that in itself is inspirational because everything was so unlikely, unlikely to do this, not be able to do that. Ah, well, she's proved everybody wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. You have. You quite like that though, don't yeah. you? Yeah. No wrong. We do. Yeah, to have this recovery were only a dream. It were a dream at the beginning. It's reality now. What's your favourite motto? <laughs> I mean, yeah. oh, I mean. Meaning your chair won't stop you. Oh, well, there. Yeah.